Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. Glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin in January 2nd, Walk 2, From Paradise to Pain, Genesis 3 to 5. Overview. What began as paradise is quickly spoiled by sin. Satan, disguised as a serpent, tempts the woman by turning her gaze from God's bountiful provision, the many trees, to God's one prohibition, the single tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve's disobedience in eating from this forbidden tree results in their expulsion from the garden. The seeds of their sin quickly grow as their first son Cain commits the first murder. For generation after generation, the downward spiral continues, setting the stage for God's judgment. Insight. Wages of sin. With sin, the long-term pain always outweighs the momentary pleasure. In the serpent's kingdom, that's a law as fundamental as gravity. But in the kingdom of God, the opposite is true. The pleasure of his presence, Psalm 1611, always outweighs any momentary pain. Romans 8.18, 2 Corinthians 4.17. Learning to see temptation as a choice between temporary and eternal pleasures will help us overcome them. Insight. Prophecy of Messiah. From ancient times, Jewish rabbis interpreted this offspring of the woman to be the Messiah, Hebrew, for the Anointed One. While Satan would inflict a non-lethal blow on him, he would deliver a mortal blow to Satan. When Satan brought about the crucifixion of Jesus the Messiah, he sought to nullify his prophecy. Instead, the prophecy was fulfilled, God prevailed, and Jesus conquered death. See Colossians 2.15, and Revelations 20, verses 7 to 10, predicts the ultimate blow to Satan's head, then God will destroy him, and Jesus the Messiah will reign forever. Genesis chapter 3. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced she saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give to her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you were walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed, more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live, and I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring, he will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth. 
and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made, for you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Then the man, Adam, named his wife Eve, because she would be the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skin for Adam and his wife. Then the Lord God said, Look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out, take fruit from the tree of life, and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Chapter 4 Now Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best of his firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? But the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. From now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. Cain replied to the Lord, My punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. The Lord God replied, No, for I will give you a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain had sexual relations with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Then Cain found a city where he named Enoch after his son. Enoch had a son named Irid. Irid became the father of Mahiliel. Mahiliel became the father of Methuselah. Methuselah became the father of Lamech. Lamech married two women, the first named Ada, and the second was Zillah. Ada gave birth to Zabel, who was the first of the who raised livestock and lived in tents. His brother's name was Jubal, the first of all who played the harp and flew. Lamech's other wife, Zillah, gave birth to a son named Tubal Cain. He became an expert in forging tools of bronze and iron. Tubal Cain had a sister named Nama. One day Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Listen to me, you wives of Lamech. I have killed a man who attacked me, a young man who wounded me. If someone who kills Cain is punished seven times, then the one who kills me will be punished seventy-seven times. Adam had sexual relations with his wife again, and she gave birth to another son. She named him Seth, for she said, God has granted me another son in place of Abel, whom Cain killed. When Seth grew up, He had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. This is the written account of the descendants of Adam when God created human beings. He made them to be like himself. He created them male and female, and he blessed them and called them human. When Adam was 130 years old, he became the father of a son who was just like him in his very image. He named his son Seth. After the birth of Seth, Adam lived another 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. 
Adam lived 930 years and then he died. When Seth was 105 years old, he became the father of Enosh. After the birth of Enosh, Seth lived another 807 years and he had other sons and daughters. Seth lived 912 years and then he died. When Enosh was 90 years old, he became the father of Kenan. After the birth of Kenan, Enosh lived another 815 years and he had other sons and daughters. Enosh lived 905 years and then he died. When Kenan was 70 years old, he became the father of Mahalalel. After the birth of Mahalalel, Kenan lived another 840 years and he had other sons and daughters. Kenan lived 910 years and then he died. When Mahalalel was 65 years old, he became the father of Jared. After the birth of Jared, Mahalalel lived another 830 years and he had other sons and daughters. Mahalalel lived 895 years and then he died. When Jared was 162 years old, he became the father of Enoch. After the birth of Enoch, Jared lived another 800 years and he had other sons and daughters. Jared lived 962 years and then he died. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years walking in close relationship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. When Methuselah was 187 years old, he became the father of Lamech. After the birth of Lamech, Methuselah lived another 782 years and he had other sons and daughters. Methuselah lived 969 years and then he died. When Lamech was 182 years old, he became the father of a son. Lamech named his son Noah, for he said, May he bring us relief from our work and the painful labor of farming this ground that the Lord had cursed. After the birth of Noah, Lamech lived another 595 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Lamech lived 777 years, and then he died. By the time he was 500 years old, he was the father of Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. My Daily Walk Satan is masterful at taking a blessing of God and turning it into something that brings a curse instead. If given the chance to convince you to seek the pleasures of sex outside the bonds of marriage, to exchange the worship of the Creator for the worship of the creation, to substitute what is convenient for what is obedient. The temptation will be cunning, the promise inviting, but as Adam and Eve discovered, the painful consequences will far outweigh the temporary pleasures. For many Christians, resisting temptation is difficult because they don't want to discourage it completely. God has promised to provide a way out in 1 Corinthians 10.13, but that doesn't help if you keep leaving a forwarded address. Write the references of James 4.7 and 2 Timothy 2.22 in the margin next to Genesis 3, look them up, read them twice, and then take them to heart. Satan, like a fisherman, baits his hook according to the appetite of the fish. Thanks everybody, have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless.